Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for us to look at our second conversation. We'll be focused on the Accountant General of the Federation and his fraudulent activities of 80 billion naira. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has arrested the Accountant General of the Fed Federation, AGF, Ahmed Idris, over 80 billion naira fraud. EFCC spokesman Wilson Wajarin confirmed these, uh, his arrest in a statement issued on Monday, he said Idris was arrested after failing to honor the commission's invitation to respond to issues connected to fraudulent act. According to the EFCC, the fraud were laundered via real estate investment in Kano and Abuja. We have Mohammed Abdullahi, a public affairs analyst, joining the conversation this morning to make sense of all of this. Mohammed Abdullahi, thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. Good morning, Nigerians. Thank you for having me. It's all right. Let's share your thoughts on this development that we have. 80 billion naira and the accountant general involved in all of this. Uh, what, what do you make of this um, you know, incident? And do you think it's a plus to the EFCC? Yeah, um, I think to start, uh, first and foremost, uh, we need to give kudos to the EFCC. Uh, we all understand what is happening in our country, that uh, things are not really well. Uh, I can categorically say in most part of our, uh, almost all the sectors of our economy and even our nation at large, things are not going well. But we must give kudos to the AFTC for what they've been doing uh, 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 thus far. But again, having said that, um, this latest development actually confirms that uh, uh, if we were to be very honest with ourselves, the anti-corruption anti drive of uh, this present administration, administration is not something that is uh, really working like they want us to believe. Because if after seven years of President Muhammad Buhari, uh, with the change and, I mean, the corruption mantra that brought, anti-corruption mantra, I beg, your, I beg your pardon, that brought this administration to power, and we still have, after seven years of this administration, we still have this kind of monumental incidences, I would say. Uh, it means uh, I don't think the anti-corruption drive of this administration uh, is, uh, has been well uh, achieved. Uh, so it is really unfortunate, even though um, circumstances at this moment are still very sketchy, because the EFCC just said, uh, you know, they understand that uh, there is about 80 billion proud which, uh, you know, are laundered in properties and so on and so forth. But I think why they, they went ahead to arrest the Attorney General of the Federation, is the, uh, sorry, the Accountant General of the Federation is the fact that they, they mentioned that they've been issuing him um, a kind of invite. They've been asking him, they've been inviting him to their offices and he's been dodgy, uh, refusing to honor the invitation. That's why they had to arrest him. So uh, at this moment, I would say the, uh, the circumstances are still, information are still very sketchy about what actually transpired. Uh, but uh, be that as it may, let's give kudos to EFCC for, for, for a job well done thus far. All right, uh, um, Mohammed, let's talk about the system and all the loopholes. Don't you think it actually uh, gives way for you know, these crimes to be perpetrated? For instance, now according to the statement the EFCC uh, issued, it said um, their uh, intelligence uh, showed that the AGF raked off uh, the funds through bogus consultancies and other illegal activities using proxies, family members, and close associates. Do you think that uh, you know our systems, uh, our financial systems and approaches, uh, you know, make it easy for such crimes to be perpetrated? We're talking about eighty, you know, billionaire. Yeah, um, we've had we've had these reoccurrences every now and then, and let me start uh, by saying that um, you know the office of the Accountant General of the Federation was created in 1988. And uh, you can imagine an office that was created in 19, 1988. If you take your phone now or whatsoever device and you Google Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, Nigeria, you will find very sketchy information, very, very scanty, I must say, scanty information. In fact, I was trying to make findings on that particular office. There is no terms of reference available for the public to understand 
what this kind of important office is all about. If you, like I tell you, if you make a search about that office, you only find one single page on that website. One single page with the picture of Mr. Idris Ahmed and a little description, riddled uh, with uh, grammatical errors, I must confess, saying the office of the attorney, this is the office of the accountant general of the federation. And, <clears throat> hello, are you there? No, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yes, yes. This is the office of the accountant general of, of the federation. And the functions of this office is that uh, it is, this office is actually the administrative head of the treasury of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And that is it. All other links on that website doesn't work. You can't click on anything and they take you anywhere. Just one page, Office of the Accountant, Federal, uh, Accountant General of the Federation of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So, you know, be that as it may, like, we, like you rightly mentioned, the system is so cumbersome. The system is so ambiguous that, you know, it doesn't give room for accountability because it's, it, it, it baffles the mind that in this time, in this time and age, in this jet age, that you have the Accountant General of the Federation starting with responsibility of about 80 billion to do what? He's not, he's not a, he's not, he's not a uh, elected officer. So what does he do? Does he, does he, does he give out contract? Does he sign contract? What does he do? I remember another drama about the same Accountant General last year when he was defending the budget for his office. In fact, the, he has a, a very, he had a very, uh, uh, he had a loggerhead with um, Honorable Faleke at the House of Representatives when he presented 36 million for fumigation of the office of the Accountant General Office nationwide. You know, so, you know, our system makes it so difficult for us to be accountable, for, for public service officers to be accountable. And it's so, so unfortunate at this stage. But Mohammed Abdullahi, in the course of this conversation, you have said that um, the fight against corruption in the Buhari administration is nothing to write home about. I mean, it's not real. As a matter of fact, after seven years, you still have this. Why, why, why uh, such statement? Yes. Uh, if you cast your mind back just a month ago or even less, this administration actually approved the recommendation for presidential pardon of about 162 or so convicted inmates, uh, ranging from, uh, uh, in fact, ranging from fraudsters, people who have been convicted for forgery, people who have been convicted for stealing up to hundreds of millions, and notable among these people are people who have been con convicted by EFCC for, 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 for public stealing like, like, like uh, the ex-governor of uh, Plateau State, Joshua Darie, and uh, the former governor of um, Taraba State, uh, Reverend, Reverend Johnny Nyami. So why do you set up an institution like the EFCC and the ICPC, uh, which was set up actually by former President Olusha Gwambasanjo, and then after so much effort, it, not, it, it does not only require effort, it requires time, and also the resources of the taxpayers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Then, just at the snap of a finger, people who are saddled with the responsibility of, uh, you know, ensuring a corrupt-free Nigeria, starting from the president, you know, will sit down somewhere and say, okay, we can just give these guys presidential pardon. That is really, really unfortunate. In fact, that singular event, that singular pronouncement by the president and his caucus in really downplayed the, the, the fight against corruption. It, it, it really makes it look very childish that this is what the president has been riding, uh, 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 this is what the president has been clamoring, that he's coming to fight corruption in Nigeria. And then while EFCC has secured, you know, conviction of some people for forgery and public stealing, then the same president is approving the recommendation of presidential pardon for uh, same convicted criminals. I'm sorry. So it, it, it's, it's really unfortunate. And let me add, you see, um, uh, the, the, the late uh, statesman and icon, global icon, Mandela, actually mentioned that you don't judge a nation by the way it treats its elite citizen. Rather, you judge a nation by the way they treat their downtrodden. In Nigeria, it's the other way around. How many of petitives, I'm not encouraging petitives here, uh, uh, please get me right, but how many petitives who have gone to the market to steal one or two products? Probably they are hungry. Or how many of petitive who have stolen probably 10,000, 20,000 naira from wheresoever? 
have been granted presidential pardon. You have people who have stolen billions, impoverished their community, impoverished Nigeria and Nigerians, and they are granted presidential pardon. Pardon. Definitely, this is not how the way. This is not, this is not how to fight corruption. But just how far do you think uh, this particular investigation would actually go? I hope it will not be swept. Do you think it will just take its full course or it might just be swept under the carpet? I don't think it will be swept under the, uh, under the carpet because, you know, uh, what the FCC has been doing is, um, to some extent, a media trial. So when, 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 they, when they are about to nail any kingpin, they, they, uh, they, they, they bring it out here. So, for instance, if you, if you Google about the the, the attorney, uh, accountant general of the federation, what you find mostly now is the is the is the is the issue about his arrest. So, I am sure the FCC will not want to sweep this kind of uh, uh, story under the cap. It's, 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 it's too bogus and too big uh, uh, a story to be swept under the carpet. So, I want to give the FCC the benefit of the doubt to say uh, they will go ahead. They will try their very possible best to make sure a justice is done. Mm. But, but do you see the justice system? I mean, because the argument that's been put out now is that the justice system, it's okay to say um, he's been arrested, he's been found, uh, you know, culpable of taking 80 billion naira. What would happen? Because uh, all of the reactions right now is that the justice system would actually not uh, serve its purpose. So it's possible that he would actually you know, be exonerated in all of this? It is very possible. Remember that um, everywhere all over the world, not only in Nigeria, all over the world, justice is based on evidence and uh, argument. In fact, sometimes even if you have black and you're able to prove to the judge that this is white, you can get away with, 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 with that offense. So uh, it, it is very important that the EFCC make sure they have a case and not only a case they they should ensure that it's a case that is very much presentable and they have all the available in, uh, evidences to make sure that uh, if the uh, accountant general of the federation is found guilty that he is served justice accordingly remember the former um if you remember uh, i think just two months ago even less the former uh, group managing director of uh, the, the the nmpc uh, so, uh, uh, what's his name? Something Yakubu. I've forgotten his first name. Yeah, was exonerated after more than two, three, four years of um, of back and forth with the NFPC. Uh, with the NFPC, he was uh, accused of uh, stockpiling uh, U.S. dollars, uh, foreign uh, currencies in his hometown in Kaduna, but they were unable to nail him due to evidence available. He was able to prove to the court, to the Supreme Court, that these monies were given to him as gift. And the FCC failed to provide such monies uh, at the court to counter his claim. So the, the court set him, set him free. So uh, it's very important that the ENMPC learned their lessons from so many cases that they've gone through over the years. It's not just one case. It's very important that they, they do their, their, their homework uh, uh, very well so that if they, are, if they have uh, available evidences to nail the, the accountant general of the federation, the, the justice and, this, and, and the court will have no option than to serve justice. But, uh, just before we let you go, just what does he tell of this present um, um, dispensation uh, of um, stance on um, anti-corruption or anti-graft war? Because uh, before now, there were talks of... Um, um, Ibrahim Margo, and uh, eventually uh, he wasn't arrested. Uh, uh, there was talk of uh, the um, uh, the the AGF Malami, you know, and uh, buying cars when he's still in office, and um, no nothing, uh, no uh, investigation has been done. There's so much, uh, you know, lots of people in this administration, you know, being alleged to have committed one crime or the other. It's, uh, it's, it's the same issue that I've been discussing uh, earlier on. You know, I, I told you that rather than convict uh, um, people, particularly our elite, for their wanton corruption cases, we have actually rewarded them. Yeah. One of the rewards is presidential pardon. One. And you, you just reminded me, just same yesterday, okay, while uh, the story broke out that uh, the Accountant General of the Federation has been arrested for evading 
uh, EFCC invitation, blah, blah, blah. Same Ibrahim Magu that was, uh, I, I want to use the word disgrace out of office, that was suspended, you know, from the same EFCC, you know, uh, that has been pushed aside for so long. We actually don't know, even though he's a police officer, we actually don't know whether he's still in active service or not, you know, was elevated to the position of Assistant Inspector General of Police, same yesterday, despite the clear evidences by the report uh, that, were, that were constituted against him to say he was he used his office as the chairman of the EFCC to do so many wrongs, but he was he was he was he was virtually rewarded. Even though they are talking about him, um, 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 what's it called, retiring soon from the police force. But how do you how do how do you reward an officer that that served the EFCC as chairman and you have damning reports against such officer? You know, even though he's not been convicted by the, by the law court, but there were, in, there, there were independent reports about him to say he's done so much wrong. But again, the Nigerian system, like we keep mentioning, has just rewarded him with Assistant Inspector General of Police. That's actually the, 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 the third highest rank uh, in, the, in, in the cadre of the police institution in Nigeria. So that's what we, we, we talk about. You can't say you want to fight corruption and you keep rewarding people who are corrupt. You understand? It, it doesn't work that way. It's not possible. You know, uh, and it's so, so unfortunate that we find ourselves in such a situation, a uh, precarious situation in Nigeria. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mohammed Abdullah. We've been looking at uh, the arrest of the nation's um, uh, accountant general over 80 billion naira fraud. We do appreciate your time, Mohammed. Well, thank you so much thank for being so part much. of the breakfast. Uh, we appreciate your thoughts as always. Uh, we wish you the very, very best today as you proceed in the course of your activities. But that's the size of the conversation on the breakfast. We will call it a wrap here and return tomorrow. And if you missed out on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel with Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. And I'm Justin Akadonio. Many thanks for being a part of the show.